Oh my god. There we go. Smoke and mirrors, baby. I gotta I gotta deflect that last goof up with uh Siez's cat. We just see you now. Let's see the cat. Lift him up. Alright, sorry, I wanted to unmute my mic. Uh, so is I he going to talk to us too? I don't know how happy he's going to be about standing Sometimes here. Sometimes if you squeeze him, they will like howl. You can make him talk. Oh, look, he's licking your finger. He loves you. What a lovey dovey bear. Look at this guy. You're, oh. on, you're on TV, Max. How many viewers we got? 465 by my count there. You're famous now, Max. You're a famous cat. Oh. Thank you for being nice. I'll go let you bask in the sun again. Say goodbye to everybody. He seems very sweet and happy and completely enamored with you. You must be a good cat parent. All right. Kotu.org says we have 500 plus viewers, so I'm going to go with that. Thanks for coming out, everybody. Do we see anybody from Relic? I haven't been following the chat at all. I'm sorry, guys. Anybody from Relic in the chat? Did anybody say hey? Hey, look at Dr. Wax is in the chat. AWA59B. That's the man right there, our top benefactor. That is the man, the myth, the legend. Let me just show all of our contributors so far once again. There we go. I, I every once in a while I just like to click through to Don Dr. Vox and show you this badge with 110 <laughs> levels because it's so shiny. Witness! Witness the shine. It's so shiny. <gasps> Witness! All right. I'm just I'm showing back. off Dr. Vox badge with his 110 okay. levels again. Yeah. Here's um. my badge. I have four, but I'm going to get more because I want the leaves. Look at Here's my new signature from... Uh, from TM Dutchie. Woohoo! Okay, so uh, where were we? Yes, booting Co2. Um, it's uh, uh, Love Nest time. Replays. All right, loading on Langaskaya. All right, come on in game, folks. Follow me in. PP. 3-5 asks, why Sunday night fights on a Saturday? Well, because we're eager beavers and we just couldn't wait till tomorrow to launch this thing. We, we bas it, it got ready and we threw all this together and we launched it. We have an insanely fast turnaround time at KOTU.org. That's one of the cool things about being a relatively small organization is that we can just turn things around lickety-split. So... We couldn't wait till tomorrow. We just had to launch it. And I'm so happy that we did. Yeah. Uh, I hope that Relic notices just how vested this community is in uh, you know, the competition behind Co2. And yeah, the competitive hell yeah. We all see the potential. Um, I'm paused at 10 seconds. All right. I also have a file. Let me catch up. OK. Let me try to. Full screen. I'm in window mode. All right. I am full screen. My fog of war is off. I'm ready. Right. Yeah, paused at 10. All right. At 10 seconds, then let's count it in. Uh, we're going to unpause in three, two, one, unpause. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Fighting out of the southern corner of Langra Sky in the blue trunks, playing the Rodina. That's the Soviet faction. It is our player from Germany who I just met in person for the first time a month ago. Love Nest! And fighting out of the northern corner on Langra Sky, the challenger in this contest. Representing, we're not sure where, but we're thinking somewhere in Southeast Asia. Yeah. He's in the red trunks playing the Wehrmacht. It's Ihito. <laughs> WWU. We'll have to figure out what that stands for. Is Ihito team. is a top ladder player in many factions. Correct me oh, yeah. if I'm wrong, CS. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yep. All right, your, uh, your, your mic is not by your face or something. I don't know. We lost you. you I, need, I need volume. It's done. Mic Good. check, mic check. You're very quiet. 
Hmm. Something's wrong. Did did the cat did the cat knock into something? I don't think so. I can hear you, but you're not as loud as as you were before. We built it as hmm. Let me see if I can just boost my mic real quick. All right, I can hear you now. It seems to be a bit better. All right, I did move it up a little bit closer. So. Now, now you're good. Now you're good. All right, so talk to me about the garrisons of these houses on the right-hand side. Love Nest just hopped in and then hopped out. What's he doing? Uh, the cons would probably lose to those Grens, and so I think he wants to hold the house. So, like, if anything tried to go in the house, he could grab it if he needed to. But uh, he doesn't want to just lose that engagement straight up. So he's just vying for time, basically, and making sure that Ihido doesn't cap that fuel point. So he doesn't want to sit in it because he would lose the engagement, but he wants to, like, protect it in case someone else tries to nab it. Yeah, exactly. And he gets to scout with it, right? He gets to kind of see the 360-degree view. So, like, you know, Kotu has the true sight. So when he gets in the house, he can see everything, uh, whereas if he's behind the house, he can't. So he's scouting and just kind of vying for the control of that territory. It's so funny. You know, he hops in, and the fog of war, like, just blooms. You see so much more. And then he hops out, and then it goes all dark. He doesn't even see the enemy in the opposing house. We've got a close range uh, engagement by this tractor on the right, and the cons are going to lose that. They see the reinforcements coming, and they just bug out. Let me turn the fog of war back off again. It's another little engagement in the center. Wow. How did those cons get so roughed up that they had to retreat from Pyos in the center? I feel like they might have been partially on red cover. Uh, there's a lot of red cover there, and Pyos at close range are a lot more deadly than uh, you would, you know, first think. Though the Pyos will probably be these engineers too, in all honesty. I don't know. He just right, retreats. Yeah. Hito's gonna bail. Lubness had a good position there, and he didn't move his units. He, he kept them in cover. Loveness is trying to keep this bookmark on this house, but it looks like he might have to give it up. Now he's gonna go. I like that uh, the laundry is being dried here on these on this on this string to stretch between these two poles. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice little uh, detail. <laughs> bonus. Map detail. I guess if you wet your pants because you're getting shot at, you can just grab a new pair, right? There you don't you have go. to be embarrassed. Yeah, you got underpants, you got a shirt. I don't know what this thing is. It looks like a little hat or something. It's like like a baby's hat. A pair of black socks, a dish rag. You get the whole gamut. Early flamers from Love Nest. The burning oil is starting to pour in. Ahito's got a nice position behind the fence, but I think Loveness has enough units to oust him. Yeah, especially with the flamer support. And I hit was actually focusing the flamer squad, which is probably the right call, but it lets these cons uh, move into close range where they're dominant over Grens. So it's a nice little tactical move by Love, noticing that his cons weren't getting focused and he could walk them up. Now they're going to pop some bags down. Um, one of the complaints from a previous patch was that the sandbags were too... Uh, durable, can you talk a little bit about the nerf that they received in the July patch? Yeah, so first of all, cons actually take extra damage. Well, they, I guess, they have extra received accuracy. Overall, they take more damage when building sandbags, and the bags themselves have less health, which means like when tanks and mortars and stuff are shooting at them, they're gonna live only like half as long. So they're easier to get rid of and they're harder to get up, is kind of the, uh, the summation of it. And that's generally received as a really good change, right? Yeah, the a big problem was like you just built sandbags everywhere because there was no reason not to. There's no risk involved. Like if you get caught building sandbags, whatever, you don't take extra damage, just keep going. And they just put guards behind it and like OKW especially had just no good counter to guards and sandbags. Once again, Love Nest trying to sneak in and control this house. Friends find green cover behind the tractor. If left alone, they'll probably win that fight. But we'll see if reinforcements have something to say about it. What do you think about Ahito just leaving this MG here? We just watched Aimstrong and some really fine MG micro emplacement, and by comparison, Ahito's MG seems a bit static. Yeah, I've been. I think behind the well by that house, or in that other house, or even behind the sandbags that uh. The Loveness put up would be better because right now, I mean, I guess it kind of covers his cutoff, but it, uh, his back is exposed in so many areas. And now he's now, picking it up. Now he's moving. And what do you think of this Maxim build from Loveness? I like it. Uh, so he's only seen four Gren squads, and 
the Maxim being either in this house or in the houses near his munitions. It's like two really, really strong Maxim spots. And how this game can get kind of grindy in the middle. Um, I think the Maxim can help in the long run, kind of control the grants once they get LMGs. You need some kind of crowd control or else your comms is just going to die like flies. Alright, talk to me about, for example, this Maxim squad, which is a six-man squad, going in a house and how the squad uses windows and, you know, before there was an issue with, like, teleporting and jumping around, but that's been resolved, right? I think so. So basically, the way it used to always be is only one guy could shoot out of one window at a time, which makes sense. I think Relic was trying to update some legacy code, and there's at least one patch. It might still be the case where, like... The way the game calculates the weapon priority involved like reloading models that would like teleport not at a window so that a new guy would teleport to the window and it looked really funky. But uh, yeah, basically you can only shoot out of whatever windows are actually on the house. I see like some new players. That was a nice you see that nade? That was filthy. Yeah, that was a nice thing. Man, rifle grenade shot wipes an entire conscript squad. Okay, go on. Yeah, so I see some new players make the mistake of like they'll get into a house with a con squad that only has two windows and you're just losing so much of your damage. Like, you see that house, that little baby house by uh, Love Nest's Munitions? By Love Nest Munitions, the little shed between the, the two yeah. houses? Yeah. Yeah, like if you had a con squad in there, it's, it's just not a good idea to garrison a house like that most of the time. Right, because you can only fire out of the amount of available windows. And that's, you know, that's that's classic Company of Heroes. Like, knowing a map and know, knowing how many windows face which direction in a house is, is key to, you know, map knowledge. And um, it's good that that issue was sorted out because that's an important aspect of playing the game. Because you also want to only engage from the sides of houses that have the least windows, right? If you're the aggressor against the house. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, there, there were some houses where you could, like, sit in them, and um, they were hard to dislodge because your units wouldn't be fired upon. And then there are other houses you could use aggressively that uh, had, like, the amount of windows facing in the direction that you're trying to capture that you could fight from. And you know what I, I love, too, is houses that have entire faces with no windows at all that act as a blind spot. I used to love that aspect of Semwa on the original game where that house by the northern cutoff would have a total blind spot facing in one direction and the, and the, the player that was being cut off could always approach from that direction to clear units from that house. I'd love to see yeah. that. I think there are a few houses that are like that in Code 2, but it doesn't seem like there is as many. So there's one on Eindhoven, but it's often yeah. complained about because it's the opposite of what you're saying. It's the guy being cut off. Like, if if his enemy gets that house, the enemy can they, shoot he out. He can't get him out. Yeah, that's that's right. Bad. That's just and then that, on, that's something that should be changed on the map. Not, not right, right, the right, aspect, right. not not the technical aspect of the gameplay, but that particular house should be rotated on that map. Right. Right. Because yeah. then the other problem is if he's trying to protect his cutoff and he gets into the house, it has no windows <laughs> that he can use aggressively. Right. Yeah. It's, it's key, man. Map making in Co2 is such an intense challenge. Like to make a good tournament map is so incredibly difficult. Yeah. Even there are, there are I guess a big. Uh, it's an RTS problem in general. Even in StarCraft, it's it can be a problem. But StarCraft, but so StarCraft is a lot easier because so many of the StarCraft maps are just reflected, you know? They're either like 50-50 reflections or they're like some kind of rotation reflection where each third is exactly the same. And, and also that, there's no such thing as cover or garrison yeah, right, in exactly. StarCraft. Yeah, or destructible terrain. Right. So, yeah. I mean, it's way easier in StarCraft. It's much greater challenge to make a great competition map in CO2. Oh, for sure, for sure. I look forward to the uh, OCF tournament, though, because it will be the first tournament that I've been a big part of that will involve Angoville, and I'm sure Angoville will make the tournament map list, don't you think? Yes. Oh, I love Angoville. It's a really, really good port into Co2. And the other thing while we're on maps, hopefully this isn't breaking any NDA or any Relic or whatever, uh, I did hear that Relic has actually gotten directly in contact with a bunch of the map guys from Co2.org. And it's going to be having them actively helping Relic uh, improve all of their auto match maps. Awesome, because it's it's the top players. You know, to improve a map, you can't just do it on your own. You could be the best map maker in the world, and you could not improve your map. You need 
the, the best players, not just any player, but really competent players to, uh, you know, put your map through the ringer. They got to try it out. They got to battle each other. They got to ex they got to explore like OP strat possibilities. And you need to be able to look at their games and see what needs to be adjusted. And, you know, it's really hard to get a lot of quality feedback like that when you're a map maker. I just remember yeah. the process. We had custom maps in Sunday Night Fight Season 4. We had one map by White Flash and one map by Uncle Sam, which is, you know, the map was Bois du Chatelet, which is now Crossing in the Woods, which we just watched. And I just remember it took them months of receiving feedback for them to adjust the maps and get them to a tournament quality state. Months. You know? And Even this map has gone through so many iterations already. That's right. That's right. The base and placements used to cover strat points. Those have been adjusted, etc. So, every, yeah, this, and, you know, new avenues, of paths through hedgerows have been opened. Yeah, it takes a long time. I, I think people, a lot of people don't appreciate how long it takes to get a map to really tournament quality. And just how hard a map is to build from scratch, too. It takes forever. Oh, yeah. Because then is it not only a technical challenge to like lay out all the sectors and, and, and facilitate good gameplay flow, but it's also an artistic challenge to make the thing interesting and beautiful. Yep, exactly. Those two combined, they're totally different tasks, but you have to do both well to make a good, well-rounded map. All right, let's talk, let's talk back about the game. Give us a little army review of what these guys have got pitted against one another. All right, so map pretty much split in half. And this is, uh, you know how last game I mentioned that austere composition that Aimstrong was rocking? If we look at Ihitos, we have those four Grins. He's building his second pack and he has one MG uh, versus Loveness only having three cons, a T70. He has two Engineers. Interestingly enough, he gets one Flamer, one Sweeper. I don't think he's seen any mines yet. I guess he doesn't, he doesn't want his T70 to run into a Teller and die. And he has a nice Mortar too. Mortars are so strong. I'm surprised Ihito didn't get an austere Mortar. On uh, this map, you know how campy it can get, or not how campy, it's how long and grindy this map can be. I'm surprised that uh, Ihito hasn't invested in a mortar. Well, unlike the game we just saw between Aimstrong and Cruzy, these guys are really Ooh, preserving their mid. units. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Uh, I don't know Why if he can he get them the all. Trigger? What's he waiting He'll for? He'll get three. He wants to lure oh him a little bit. Greedy, are you serious? Really? Love Nest, you greedy bastard. There he goes. He got there them all anyway. They didn't even move, he got them all. I might not have seen it. He is microing three other engagements. What I was, the There's point I was going to make is these guys have really preserved their units. They haven't, you know, thrown everything at each other so willy nilly as we saw Armstrong and Cruzy. So it's a Look, lot harder to find cracks in an army when there are so many units on the field. Right, exactly. That was really good use of the Maxim. Uh, actually suppressing two Grand Squads with just that one lone Maxim from max range. It was really good. Really good. Uh, I missed that. Yeah, I mean, he's he got two packs, really, so he's but... really building a lot of tier, low tier units, right? Yeah, so he wants to just kind of catch the T70 out of position for one second and then kill it with the packs. You know, the two packs hitting will kill it instantly, whereas one pack probably won't finish the T70 off ever. And I just looked at the uh, Ihito HQ. He hasn't even gone to the second battle phase. No, I think he's going to go with that command tank. He just picked mechanized uh, doctrine. So we'll probably see that coming as soon as he has the manpower for it. All right, let's let's examine the fog of war. You can see that Lubness can see really far. He's got a lot of units scouting around the map, giving him good map vision. Now let's look at what Ihito sees. Lubness using really uh, really great use of true sight and hiding his T70 behind that house and just poking in and out, avoiding those packs. Right. Oh, he might get shot Ooh. now. Yeah, let's hit one. Let's see, we're, we're following a Hito now, and we can see that there's a shadow behind that house that Love Nest is adeptly exploiting. That's one thing I love in Co2 as well, is the true sight mechanic. Is It's amazing for an RTS like, like this, with all this tactical gameplay. Yeah. So yep, Command P4 does hit the field for Ihito, and that's going to increase the health you know, the effective health of this army a lot. He comes blazing forward. He's going after these conscripts. He's assist. Whoa, he does pushing hard. I hit He's a bringing mine. two packs forward. Lots of grins. 
Man, I love that. You know, get a new strong unit like this P4 and just rage, right? Just send everybody. I love it. Somehow he's avoiding all the mines, though. It's a little bit unlucky for love. He had really good mine placing there. And... Look at what those are grins. The... There's... What's, oh, there what's with goes. the fear propaganda? Who did, he... Who did Love Nest retreat with those pamphlets? Those frightening pamphlets. He's trying to get to retreat, actually. What? Can... He's Will trying they... to get Will, yeah, will fear propaganda it. force Pax to retreat? Wow, T70 to chase down Ikido with a strong attack. Uh, your volume has decreased again, CS. I don't know. Volume oh, yeah. uh, Let me just talk closer. Now you're good. You're good. Right. I, I do remember the the funny thing of seeing Pax retreat. It's always quite odd when it happens. Yeah, I'm but pretty sure it can still happen. I would need an instant replay though, because I don't know if Lubness just like missed, but I didn't notice which squad had to run. I was kind of I know the, uh, all wrapped up in the P4. The Pios were at least suppressed for a while. So this is interesting. You know, Ihida pushed really hard, but it, it wasn't like the kind of all-in pushes that we would see from Cruzy or Armstrong, where stuff would just get wiped. You know? Yeah, it's he like, didn't go for the base. Like, uh, no, Cruzy it wasn't an all-in push. A times. He got the T70, but then he backed out. That was enough. You know, He's like, OK, I got the T70. Let me regroup, reorganize get my units in formation. And now we have the infantry leading the charge. The packs are looking for position. Wow, that first shot from the SU-76 oh, nice. kills a bunch of Grens. And two Grens are going to have to retreat. All Grens retreat. So when the infantry has to retreat, all of the support units must also backpedal. But now that that P4 is there, I mean, what does the P4 have to fear? Here's the Zis from Love Nest. Well, the Zis and the SU-76 has really great penetration now. So the SU-76, I mean, he couldn't go one-on-one -on -one against the P4 command tech, could it? No. Um, yeah, yeah. So it has more what? range. What? One-on-one -on -one it could go against it? Yeah. Unless it gets flamed. Oh, my god. But goodness. it has as much, it's literally a Ziz on wheels. Like, it has the same penetration, I'm pretty sure, as the Ziz, or maybe just slightly, slightly less. But it has so this, uh, the 60 range, have to too. micro and get around it. Yeah, right, right. Because the SU-76 has no turret. But it'd be hard to flank the SU-76 and the Ziz. Right. And he's using the barrage. He's trying to clear this MG. Oh, so he kept the middle VP. And nice that hit. last barrage shot. Wow, I thought it might annihilate the squad. But it looks like Ahito's going to save it. Barely, barely. Yeah. So Love could grab a KV-8. Uh, he has the resources for it. I wonder if he wants that or if he's going to just tech tier 4. With two packs out, he might want to grab a Katusha, actually. So, so Love's got um, a teammates unlocked, but we haven't seen him get an opportunity to use them yet. No. I had always been keeping that P4 out of 18 8 range, which is good because that SU could chase it down pretty easily if it got caught out. All right. Ahito's uh, infantry is now reinforced, and these LMG'd up Grens are, are, are surging forwards. Love Nest doesn't like the look of it. He's backing his this gun away. But wow, the Flamers. I was just about to say that they're staying in this fight just a little too long. And before I'm able to utter the words, they explode. That crit, that Flamer, that that dreaded Flamer crit when your Flamers just blow up. But now Love Nest has a KV-8 heavy flamethrower. Wow. He's going to do a really good job of screening for his SU-76 as well. And here we see that battle I was talking about, hit. but the two packs, the two packs catch the SU-76 and just destroy it. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. SU-76 is down. Also pushing, uh, or I should say rotating to hit that KVA. They get a couple nice shots on there and take it to like half. They did a lot of damage, and it was interesting to watch them shoot over the head of the Zis into the KVA. It was a very good engagement for Ihido. I think, did he lose the Grunt Squad right in that fight, or maybe earlier? He did lose one Grunt Squad at some point. He still got three. That, that, yeah, yeah, he still has three, and uh, he took out Engineers for Love Nest and the SU-76 for Love Nest. Yeah, so both of Love Nest's early Tier 3 vehicles, the T-70, um, well, one from Tier 3. Let's see, is the SU-76 in Tier 3 too now? Okay, yeah. So both of his early tier three vehicles have been destroyed. Let's see if he can keep his call-in tank alive a little longer. That's important. He'll need that to protect his AT gun if he wants to stand against the P4 at all. AT gun's really in a strange position all the way on the right side of the map. Now he's bringing it back towards the center. 
Yeah, sometimes it's hard to keep track of all that kind of stuff <laughs> when there's just so much going on. Love Ness is repairing the KVA. But how can he push? You know, like the KVA, I mean, he can fight off like infantry harassment on the wings or whatever with the KVA, and he can protect the AT gun, but does he really have the capability to push? Well, right now, probably not, which is why I think he's, is he attacking 2 4? No, he hasn't attacked 2 4. This is why I was thinking um, to be able to push against the packs, you have to have something to dislodge them, right? Because you can't just drive straight at them. Uh, so that's why I was thinking he might need a Katusha, or even maybe a second mortar might do it. If you could smoke, like smoke the packs and then bring the KV 8 up. And the packs are pushing forward. I'm not quite sure what they're after. Pretty I guess brave they packs, don't want that yeah. KV 8 having any sort of room to play in the middle of the map. But the Gren protection is back at the base, so, well, let's see, where are all the Grens? Here's a full health triple vet Gren squad in the center. Oh, B4 wow. commenting is a nasty shot on the vet 2 con. Yep. Making good use of that house as well, so, you know, this is won't be able to shoot back at it. P4 Pushing up aggressively now, though. You might think it was this. I just has to back out. Combat engineer squad goes down for love, unfortunately. I missed that. First I thought it was his own mortar, but it, no, it wasn't. There's no friendly kills on the mortar. Love Ness has got some nice mines along his flank. It, I mean, it kind of looks like he's hunkering down and that he's playing for a late game. But, you know, he, he's got the map control. He's got the center VP, so the yeah, burden hey, uh, is not on him really yet. Do you see what Ahido is building back in his base? Ooh, here we go. Artillery. That is classic. You know, that's a, like the Allies used to always build a Howie. Like they would always go infantry and build a Howie in Co. 1 on this map. And now we're seeing it from the Vermont. Very interesting. I love this gun. I love the sound that it makes when it fires. Yeah, all the artillery in this game is so beautiful to listen to. And this is one of the uh, potential problems and big complaints with this patch with how much they buffed howitzers letting them be built inside of bases and shoot at bases feels a little bit like you know i don't know i don't want to say cheesy because i hate that term yeah i'm looking at the range and you know it covered it goes past the tier four building on um the soviet hq i mean for this map artillery arranging artillery in the other base was common i mean it's not a very big map but I could see that being a problem in larger formats like 2v2 maps and 3v3 and up. It's also like how much how much skill does it take to shoot a Howie at the enemy base? <laughs> yeah. That, that kind of argument, I guess, is where I would come at it from, too. Oh, here comes the Artie. Where's it shooting at? Where's it shooting? shooting? Mortar, I think. I gotta, I gotta zoom in and hear it fire. Oh, yeah. Okay, where's that going? Where's that going? Okay, around the center. I guess he's dislodging. Uh, maybe he was after the mortar? And um, Yeah, I think so. And Love Ness repositioned it. But there's another huge drama here. Hito pushed both packs really far forward. And now Love Ness is down. just... He's going all in. He's going all in. He's going to try to flank the packs with the KV-8. He does. They're both it's cleared. He captures one. P4 is hurt. If he reposition that stolen pack he might be able to kill the p4 the house falls love nest is content to just steal the thing he doesn't want to try to use it to chase i'm surprised he's not using the pack he has to kill the pack that he can't steal unless he thinks he can get a squad there to grab it maybe Okay, I, I lose big time observer points there because I showed you like artillery shooting at a mortar instead of this massive tank battle that was happening. I'm sorry, guys. I am rusty and I, I, and I vow to uh, improve my obsing. I apologize for that one. That was bad. But we did get to hear <laughs> that, that field gun fired. Yeah, I do think level steal both packs, yeah. And I hit O actually upgraded to the Oh man, order. there it is. I think I think that was the big game changing engagement. He stole yeah, two packs. Be. That is just colossal. That is How so he's shooting big. again though. Shooting at Love's base looks like. Yeah, but look, suddenly the army size of Love Nest is much larger. Is there a hotkey for the graphs? What what is the is it control? I've forgotten all the hotkeys. Let's see. Oh, I just always click the little thing in the bottom shoot. left. Yeah, oh, no, it says it's top cheat. left of the post. 
Toggle, uh, show stats, control tilde. Okay, occasionally I think after a big swing like that, I would like to show you the army values. Uh, I will after this mini push from Mahito. He's going after the center. There's oh, some there's nasty stuff dying in the this. base, right? Yeah. It's just 12 kills from that barrage alone. Man, I'm still hearing shells. There's another shot. Yeah, it shoots a lot of shells That's now. Bad boy. He's already got a vet, just got a vet one as well. Pip of vet, right? All right. So here's the uh, graph, and I want to be able to show you army value of both players. And you can see there, Love Nest in blue with the massive swing after that double pack steal. I mean, massive. Look at that. That's significant. When you get like a thousand more army than your opponent, then you're in a very comfortable position. Yeah, it's like four minutes of manpower income at, uh, to put into more mathematical terms, you know. Right. This Flammenwerfer might drive right into two AT guns. Whew, that was close. Uh, way too far forward. What is he doing there? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, how embarrassing. Probably still gonna die. Oh, oh. oh he somehow dodged it, man. Lucky ducky. Was that newly upgraded to Flammenwerfer as well? Yeah, yeah, just a minute ago. And uh, Howitzer's actually off cooldown again. Probably gonna start shooting here in a second. Oh, please. Here we go. Give it to me. Fire away. Let's see. Here we go. Oh, oh there man. we go. Hear oh, that dude, beautiful I could just sound. listen to that all day. If he day. catches those AT guns, there's two AT guns right next to each other. Oh, what a huge <laughs> shot! What, what squad was that? I just caught the tail end of the XP two, flower. Uh, Two combat engineers each lost three models, it looked like. Uh-oh. It's that the repair control group got dusted. Yeah. It's KV-8 pushing up really bravely. Oh, it's boy. oh man, is that a fresh pack from Ahito? Yes, yes it is. Yep. He built it after losing those there too. Might pick off that KV-8 actually. The gens are giving chase. Uh gens. Order goes friends, down to the sorry. Oh my god, Fear Propaganda does... Okay, he does retreat. Oh, he gets both... Wow, it has a kind of delayed effect, doesn't it? Yeah, like sometimes it'll pin and sometimes it'll force the retreat. Wow, look. Look at the delayed effect. Now it's retreated that MG. Yep, so, yep. Love Nest is able to get two Grens to go away and the MG. Not the pack, though. Are you sure it retreats packs? Because that pack was like, right under it. Yeah, I've seen it before, and they might have changed <laughs> it, but uh, I don't know if anybody in chat could confirm. See, this is where if Love Nest had his own howitzer, you could wombo combo it. So, you know, as no. they're retreating to wombo base, you shoot combo. the base. Some nice sweeping by Hito on the right flank. Yeah, he's walked into a bunch of mines, so being very paranoid. And, and for the first time in ages, all quiet on the eastern front. Yeah. Not for long. That howitzer is shooting. Here we go. Our command post is under assault. You know, infantrymen would hear those sounds and just cower in their foxholes. It's like sure. it's like a nightmare that they would take with them from the war for the rest of their lives. At least a howitzer positions for like 24 hours. Yeah, so long, right? just amazing amounts. Particularly, the allies would push into positions and just how we, the, you know, they would flatten entire cities at some point. The Germans right. were so fanatical in their defense of certain cities. You know, the orders came down on high that they are not to retreat almost ever, like in those last few months of the war. And even, even when the contest was lost, there were still entire cities flattened by artillery because, you know, like the, the fanatic troops just would not ever give up. They had to dig right. snipers yeah. out of like piles of rubble. They had to dig, you know, like young, young, the young reserves would sneak behind the lines, and and you know, I mean, it was just a nightmare. Supply sector under attack. So so much, um, so much, um, so many lives lost for no real reason, you know, like after the war was was over, go, by all yeah. means and purposes. So, love or no, I also said love nest's howitzer. I hit those howitzer just got bet too, which uh, unfortunately for love nest means it's gonna shoot even more often. <laughs> bet two. Let's see. I can hover, improve battlefield surveys, increase shell accuracy, and rate of fire. You know, 
see is I would love it if they actually put some of the math into these tool tips. You know? Ooh, that's a really good idea, actually. You know, rate of fire, I have to guess. You know, like, tell me exactly the numbers. Why do I have to go to right. code2.org and look at the veterancy tables? Okay. Yeah, how can I memorize all that math? Come on, give me a break. There's so many units. Put the math in the game, man. Let me see it. I think it should be there. Yeah, that's actually yeah. a really good suggestion. I love that. That's the way you just teach players how to play. You know, you just gotta show them the Jason details. Was talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. So like yesterday, Jason wants to like improve the viewer experience. So like, when you're in green cover, you get a green shield. But as a viewer who doesn't play the game, it's like, well, what does that mean? Uh, so he wants to make the UI of the game a lot more kind of transparent. So that might be a good way to do it as well, especially for new players. Yeah, I think on uh, the veteran shooting tool tips, it should say exactly what bonuses they give. Definitely down to down to the, down to the numbers, down to the math, you know. This Maxim spinning so good. This game is vet three. You don't vet see vet three, three Maxim. Maxim. Look at that. Only six kills, but you know it's just done so much damage to so many different infantrymen. Okay. That's Another shot firing. Whoa! It like just misses that Maxim position somehow. The triple vet rifles and triple vet Maxim just walked right through that first shell without a scratch. His AT guns might catch that P4. God, he's got a he's got a posse of AT guns. Yeah. This is like a Price style or Lemon this style. This is total right Captain S Price AT gun wall. Yeah. Yeah. Man, some of them are firing. Some of them are barraging. Looks like Love Nest might be trying to put the stranglehold push. This could be the GG push coming from Love Nest. Flamenwer for pushing out hard, but there's three AT guns there. I don't think it's going to have a good day. It's very quick, though. You know, it's um, amazing. Love Nest's entire army is infantry based. Yeah. So Love Nest is doing such a superb job of as soon as his units get back to the HQ, he spreads them all out. So that that howitzer can't. I mean, he's been doing a lot of damage, right? Uh, it's at third 25 kills. I don't think it's wiped any squad so far, except for the one mortar shot. Wow, it really does have a fast rate of fire. Here comes the next barrage, and yeah, you know it is tough to take care of your units in your base while you're trying to micro at the front line. Yeah, it's very easy to forget that you're treated a couple squads that get hit by the howitzer, and all of a sudden, exactly. look at how, that maximum. How many co how many co squads have been lost in that fashion exactly? Right, <laughs> wiped <laughs> by artillery at your base when you when you retreat and you're like at low health already, and then the next shot just finishes you. Oh, out. there goes one. Oh, uh, did he get one? I mean, yeah, he got it. a con squad. Okay, well, it was bound to happen. Uh oh, yeah, yeah. Loveness is kind of like retreating his whole support team squad into his base. Not at the right time. I think he realized what he was doing and pulls him out. Okay, finally we have a vehicle. It's just a little T70, so I guess Love Nest just wants to scout for his AT gun squad. But um, that they don't really get that long scouting until they get vet right, so he's, he's going to have to try to figure out how to vet up that late game T70. Well, it can still go into recon mode, but also I think he just wants it to kind of like bleed the infantry a little bit so like his cons are having a hard time killing these vetted lmg grins what's he up to oh you know what he wants to do he's he's up to something i know what he wants to yeah. do does, what does he have that can it, okay he's gonna go spot against the arty but what does he have to deal with it he has a precision bomb oh precision hello here we go he's on a little sneaky mission Little sneaky mission from this T70 had one purpose in life, and that is to say, hello, nice to meet you, artillery piece. Here comes the precision bombing strike as we see the perhaps the last shell from that artillery piece shoot towards my screen, and not only is it cleared, but it is wiped out. A successful strike, and does the T70 escape as well, or did he buy it? He bought the form. Yeah, it's still probably worth it though. That uh, house was a huge pain for Loveness. All that Maxim, that Vet 3 Maxim died. Oh no! I love that little thing. You know, you know, Ihito just added something to his bank of um, Code 2 awareness, and it goes something like this: Don't leave flank open for cruddy little light vehicle to sneak into my base, spot my, spot my artillery, and destroy it. 
You know, yeah, like next a, time, right? Next time, there. there'll be something there. A mine yeah, or something. For sure. Players adapt. He just learned something. And Love Nest was the teacher. Don't know if he'll be able to get away with the same trick in OCF. But... Ooh, he does have a panther coming on the field, it looks like. Oh, That's going to be tough nice. for Love Nice. Nice. All right. Um, I would like to pause for one second. So pause at 36.30, just because I want to okay. ref refresh my prize pool. Because I want to see how close you are to doing a 24-hour stream. All right, we're pausing, uh, and we're going to the commentator splash real um, briefly. Sorry, guys, we'll be right back to the action. I just want to refresh this real quick. Because this will be the last game we'll be casting on Sunday Night Fights. And I want to see how close we are to getting Ciaz to do a 24-hour stream. Hey man, I think I think you're gonna be. I think I picked the exact right amount. What did I pick? Right, I picked, where are we at? Where are I picked eleven fifty. We're at ten fifty seven. So we're ninety three dollars short of a CS twenty four hour stream. So if you guys are interested in that, open up your wallets, cough it up. You got hey, it's like for a good cause, right? <laughs> it's for well. Which is the good cause? C CS is a 24 hour stream? No, 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 no. I'm just the kidding. I know what you meant. Thing. I know. Yeah. Operation Charlie Fox is the good cause, our big event coming up at the end of September. But uh, you guys have like 20 minutes to cough up $93. It's actually twice that in contributions because 50% goes to the prize pool. So let's see if we can do it. Telemarketing. Do you have any um, like phrases or can you advertise your stream and make it uh, enticing? Uh, can you? Um, I mean, I would probably spend, I'd probably spend a decent bit of it playing with viewers. Like, I don't think I could just spend 24 hours playing like 1v1s. So I'd like to do like threes and fours with viewers and people like that. All right, cool. There you go. The offer has been made. We need 93 more dollars into the prize pool before the end of the stream for a 24 hour CS stream. Hey, maybe we don't make it. Yeah, yeah maybe not. We could not, even say that uh, people on the, sorry, I think you were cutting out for a second. Oh, go ahead. People have the... You yeah, saying? I was going to say, whoever donates. So if like your name is on the donator page, then you could get like <gasps> priority. Hi, wifey. Did the wife just trip yeah. over the cat? Uh, I think the cat tried to bite the wife. <laughs> I love okay, apparently he stuff did. like that on stream. That's so funny. Uh, anyway, all right. So back to the game. Here we go, guys. All right. Back to the game. <laughs> Is everybody okay? No injuries? Yeah, no, we're good. We're good. Okay, cool. All right, guys. Love Nest and Ihito. Love Nest looking strong, but maybe the Panther can just turn this into who knows what, right? I mean, they both have like around 300 VPs, so man, maybe this has got a lot of legs left in it. All right, here we go. We're, oh, oh, sorry, I forgot. I forgot we have to sync. Uh, pause at thirty-six thirty-five. All right, heading there now. All right, pause. Okay, Ahito is just healing up all of his infantry in his base. All right, thirty-six thirty-five. Unpause in three, two, one. Unpause. Thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine. Okay. Did is this that Panther um, with the command tank around is actually going to have like a thousand health or something like that? It's going to be crazy. It's going to be basically a tiger, except with better armor and longer range. I'm so excited and I just can't hide it. Both for OCF and for this Panther coming out. Yeah, it's a rarity too. And, you know, until this last patch, it was so difficult to get to tier four as Austere in 1v1. All right, let's just have a quick look again at the army values. And wow, Ahito's made a hell of a comeback in the last few minutes. They're That's actually neck and neck. Even. Oh, wait. Now, now the graphs have adjusted. I'm really not sure. That, wow, okay. So just like a minute ago, at 37.20 or so, they were neck and neck. But then Love Nest made another significant lead. But when that panther comes out... So mine, my graphs are neck and neck, actually. They're almost yeah, mine was exactly jumping equal. back and forth between neck and neck. And uh, okay, the Panther is out now. And here he is. And he goes right to work on the KVA. Yeah, I don't think that KVA is getting away. Oh my! Oh my! 
Now let's look at the graph. And look at that. Kablooey! Kablooey Love Nest on the downward trend. Panther comes out, sticks that KB-8, and then retreats slyly. That is another gorgeous looking skin. Uh, here's if you're if we're sending tips straight to the developers, it would be nice if somewhere I could you know like I click this unit, it would be nice somewhere if I hovered on somewhere that it would show me what what skin he's wearing. You know, like I'm an obser, and I click on the panther. I don't I don't know what that skin is. What if I love that skin and want to buy it? Yeah, as I, I said, I'd probably sell more skins, right? Yeah, right. Mention that, and then maybe we'll get it. So <laughs> it would be great to you know, be able to click on the skin, and then somewhere like in the unit portrait or something, it tells you which skin he's wearing. Yeah, I agree. It'd be pretty easy to incorporate somewhere. You got all that blank space, even like just under the name. Like Panther, you know, blah, blah, blah. Just put it under there. Yeah. Okay, it's a bit quiet. The Panther was happy to stick that KB-8, and now Ahito's kind of chilling. What's up? He, he's capping that center VP. There is a demo charge there, but on the opposite side. It's an interesting spot for him to put it, because you think his units are going to take cover right, right? under that demo. Yeah. Although... <laughs> They're getting close. Those guns yeah. are flirting with it. Look at this minefield that Loveness has got waiting for any... All right, so Ihito stops the drain at 273. Oh man, here's another thing. On my stream, I have on the on the on the victory point bars. This was a bug in OBS mode a year ago, and it's still there. My left bar is a red number and a blue bar, and my right bar is a red bar and a blue number. So relic. Oh, mine to actually is two yeah. colors. Yeah, I screenshotted that for them literally six months ago. And somehow it slipped through the cracks, so that would be something to remind a dev about. So, so wait, whose way VP is whose? So, so it must be the number color that's right. It's red on the left right. by the red team, and right and blue on the right by the re the right team. So, right, so I believe just, I Hitto has 273, and that Love yeah. Nest has 338, 337. Exactly. So it's just the color of the bar that's incorrect. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. All right. Yeah, so Love Ness is ahead with uh, 335. He's going to get himself a Katusha now. Finally attacked to Tier 4, which I think is a very good call. Uh, it's because Ihido has a he has a Mortar and he has a Vet 2 pack. And so this oh. is going to let him, you know, like Katusha Barrage and then push in. It also gives him kind of a good thing to use against these LMG Grens, who's having a really hard time against. Three Vet 3 LMG Grins, one Vet 2 LMG Grin. If you ever come visit me in Berlin, I can show you a Katusha in the flesh, because we have one in Berlin where the Capitulation Treaty was signed. And, uh, yeah, we got an ISU, an IS-2, T-34, Katusha, all sorts of ZIS guns. It's, there's a really nice collection of arms at the Palace. It used to be a Wehrmacht college, but it's the palace where the capitulation was actually signed in Berlin, and so it's now a museum. The first Katusha yeah, barrage awesome. is pretty good. Cleared a pack gun. Yeah, cleared the pack and cleared the mortar and forced uh, a couple retreats on those LMG grins. It's a very, very good Katusha barrage. And I wonder if Love is going to try to pick these up. I wonder if, oh, he might try to push up and kill that pack, right? He could go for it with his packs. It's another KV-8 out. He really likes those KV-8s this game. Is Ahito playing too passively, or is this just what Vermont player needs to do? It seems like his tanks have spent a lot of time just sitting in his base. So, it's very hard to get a triple cap on Longres, right? Because one VP is so close to your own slash your enemy's base so often. It's interesting he... that he back tech to tier 3 for an Ostwin. Yeah, I'm a little bit confused about that. I wonder why he didn't get a broom bear. Because it's not like so. If Loveness had a strafe that he wanted to shoot down, I would see that makes sense. But I mean, broom bears are really good tanks. Imagine if he's playing the ultra long game, where like the awesome one is there to protect the next piece of artillery that's going up. <laughs> you, you wouldn't do that though. That's just me talking nonsense. I mean, the Oswin, I mean, it shoots down planes, but it's not reliable enough to build against that, is it? It will, it can only shoot down strafes. 
It can't shoot down like a, a bombing run. What? Why not? Yeah, because there's you just can't shoot that plane. I didn't it has know to that. be something that loiters. Like you know those planes that sit there and circle and find the new yeah. target, shoot down those. Oh, the precision strike it can't do. Okay, I get it. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. I got confused with the last game that we watched with those those thunderbolts. Right. Coming in. Yeah. Definitely will shoot down thunderbolts. Right, because precision strike's more like just like a single target arty piece. Yeah. Like an off-map column. Exactly. Ihido actually lost one of his Grens, building another Ostwind? What is he up to, man? It's like he's got some kind of trick up his sleeve that we're not he just wants to. to, what, like, go base? Maybe he wants to flank this eight. Maybe he knows that so much of um, Love Nest's army is infantry-based that maybe he just plans to go for some kind of flank rush. I mean, if he can get behind these AT guns, you know, Love Nest does not have any real armor that could stop, like, a kiting frenzy. You know? That's true. I mean, this yeah. KV-8 can't stop it. He can switch guns, but that's not going to stop a bunch of marauding Ostwinds. Where's that Satusha barrage? Right in the center. He got the mortar. He, got the, he tried to reman it, and then he got cleared again, huh? Yeah. Mortars just don't really perform against Satusha, so I think for <laughs> obvious reasons. Well, I, I would be enthused to see Ahito just go for some kind of crit. Look, he's like... He's he's massing them. He, I mean, Love Nest doesn't know yet, right? Let's put the right. fog of war on for Love. I don't Nest. think he's even seen the first Ostwind yet, right? Only, no, uh, I don't think he has any idea. And so, all right, here comes the P4. It just came into the fog. He's with it though. I mean, is Ahito gonna go for some crazy Ostwind? Okay, I saw a piece here of one. Now I see the other one. All right, here we go. Ahito with the crazy rush. Holy smokes! It's going and going. Everything's moving forward. The Panther and the P4 take the center route. The two po the two Ostwins, wow, just beautiful tactics from Mihito. But does he have the muscle? Wow, what killed the Panther? All of those AT guns were pointing at it, I guess. But now, revenge for the Axis side. Wow, what killed the... Did he get off of an 18 yeah. aid right at the end there? What killed uh, there the, was, the command tank? I think it was a mine. His um, really? IOs died, so they, the mine was no longer revealed, so it exploded. Oh my god, I want to watch that fight in super slow motion. It looks like Love Ness is going to try to now destroy all of those AT guns he lost and prevent them from being captured with a precision strike, and it does just that. It annihilates all three weapons. But he's still got these two Ostwinds, and while Siaz and I were scratching our heads at this build, look at Ikido putting the plan into action almost perfectly. I mean, of course he didn't want to lose the main tanks, but he needed them to go up the center, and he needed all the AT guns to, to rotate before the Ostwinds could, could get at him. Now, this, this um, SU-85 might be exactly what Love Nest needs to stay in the game. Yeah, because the uh, no AT guns, right? All the AT guns for everybody are dead. Man, what an attack. I want an instant replay button so badly, Ziaz. I want to watch it in slow motion and see exactly which shots landed, which units killed which other units. It all happened so quickly, man. It was just like a flurry of fire. I love it, though. I love that kind of moment. Yeah, it's beautiful. This uh, SU-85 is having a field day on these Ostwinds. There's yeah. nothing around to stop it's it. It's like hunting season. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and the and the and the Faust bounced, didn't it? No, no. It's um, Faust only engine damages if it takes the unit below 75% health. So oh, the first well, Faust doesn't damage mediums play. anymore. Great. So yeah, it can still That's chase, great. but there's another Gren squad here that will damage it if it gets the Faust on. But he's still so healthy though. Yeah, but it'll, it would take him below 75, I'm pretty sure. The, the second one would. Right at or right below 75. Maybe if it gets a rear armor shot, I don't know. Love Ness, he wants to finish hunting these Ostwinds, but he just can't find the avenue. Yeah. It's that true so, site, you know. He doesn't know exactly yeah, where it wow, is. Wow, both Ostwinds have survived. I thought he would at least get one of them. He's wow. actually cutting the base on the retreat. Yeah, he's Look going at after these friends. Hito's desperately trying to micro them away, and that shell lands on one of their heads, but they are able to reinforce so the squad will survive. Now we have these two incredibly wounded Ostwinds desperately needing repairs, and guess what? Ahito does not have a single set of pioneers. Oh, I didn't even notice that. That's huge, actually. He did get a new AT gun, though. Man, Loveness rebuilt his army pretty quickly. I'm surprised he hasn't picked up or destroyed this abandoned pack. 
That, that was amazing that Love Ness had to destroy all those packs that he owned, you know, all three of them. He, he, he knew it was the wise choice. Yeah, I wonder if that's actually going to be one of the decisions that leads him to winning the game, right? Because, I mean, that's... Maybe. You never want to have to spend it's so hard to call. To it's, it's, right. You know, it's, it's hard to analyze and predict exactly what would have happened had he not done that. Maybe he could have recaptured them himself. Maybe the Wehrmacht Maybe. could have recaptured them all. It's really difficult to know. But he did not want to take the risk. And he just said, nuh uh, you're not getting these. I think he also knew that he had an SU-85 on the way, and so, like, the last thing the SU-85 wants to fight against yeah. is a bunch of AT guns. Yeah, hell yeah. So, all in all, probably a good decision. Yeah, I think so. So, Lovness has almost the whole map at this point, though. He does. It's looking really good. And now he's shooting that pack. He does, yeah, he does not want a hit out to get that second pack back. That's, that's good to remember to target um, empty weapons and he does he takes it out successfully so one thing that chad is pointing out that i agree with is uh it's interesting i hit it with that much munitions didn't drop the smoke run probably could have saved some stuff if he'd smoked all those at guns and then pushed in or like as he was pushing in the at guns probably would have never killed the panther or the command tank i think any any little difference could have swayed that battle drastically one way or the other so Something like that, hell yeah. I mean, that battle was so close, right? It was, very, Something very Something like close. that could have tipped it massively. Perhaps the Panther could have survived. Had the Panther survived, you know, the map would look a lot different right now. Differently, excuse me. So that's something that I hit out probably will never forget too. You know, if he realized that he forgot about it and looks back at the <laughs> Yeah, game, right? Oh, that's the next, that. next thing to jot down in his Co2 notebook, right? Don't don't leave the flank of a nice artillery piece unprotected, and don't forget to smoke on this massive attack. But just just think of what he had to engineer to pull that off, right? Oh, he yeah, had to so he had to send the Panther and the P4 up the middle, get the AT guns to rotate, and then bring in the Oswins from the flank. I mean, it was a hell of a crafty plan, just just how much he did pull off, you know. And then to be able to put the finishing touch on it with something like an off-map smoke, it you know just that he escaped him. Yeah, you know he planned it well in advance too because he didn't reveal that he, he did. had text he hit those three, right? It was yeah, really exactly. a nice plan. And that's beautiful. Like these mental games are what make you know this high level play so interesting. Is those decisions yeah. of you know yeah. planning that what two minutes in advance probably? Yeah. You got you know the like, he like back text starts building the first Oswin. You got the two casters scratching their heads. Right. right exactly. And then slowly but surely we we caught on, didn't we? We caught on before yeah. it happened, but it took us a while. And that's yeah, as soon as all the tanks came from all the different directions, that's when it really started making sense. Yeah, yeah, really good stuff. Even if he goes down in defeat, he pulled off some crazy maneuvers in this game. KB has such great, such great health and frontal armor for its cost. That one pack can't really do anything but try to zone it out. Both the Ostwins are almost repaired up, though, so he might be able to do some weird, weird flank. Did he do all of that with just one pilot squad? Yeah, wow. they've been putting in the overtime for oh, sure. Wow, they've been repairing until their hands bleed. So here we go. The Ostwins pushing back out. The KV8 really wants to do some damage, though. They do pick up a con squad. Love is actually left with no conscripts. Huh. So that's no AT grenades for if he gets flanked. That's big. Now the Austins yeah. kind of have uh, free reign of maneuverability. As long as they don't hit any We're mines coming on that were left over. Oh, wow. They take it down so fast. They're also flanking the KV-8, which is engine oh! damage. The SU-85 is plugging away at him. And there's all these mines here, too. Oh my goodness, it's such a close contest. Oh, the micro, he's Four saving one. Mine, Oswin. And Oswin gets a mine. Both Oswins are in deep, deep, deep trouble. SU-85 still has pretty dead out. Look at the little T-34 that could hits the battlefield. Is That's that KV-8 going to survive? I can't believe it. I thought that KV-8 was done for. And now this T-34, what happened? Whoa. How did, oh, the pack took out the yep. SU-85. 
Now and now the pack's is... rotating on the T-34. Oh my goodness, he's trying to retreat it with the propaganda. The T-34 falls. Dude, Man, it, it would be just it's like Love Nets to upload a game that he lost, right? I don't know, he might not have a, lost a, it, a magnanimous kind of thing. It, it, that would fit Love Nest's character. O only truly strong players can upload games that they've lost. Yeah, sure. But who knows, man? This thing might have legs left in it. The KV-8 survived. Man, that pack just walloped down both of the Soviet tanks. It walloped down the SU-85 that had really good health for most of that engagement. And then it just turned and killed the T-34. And somehow... I thought the T-34 was going to come in and clean up, but it yeah, wasn't it able to kill it. either of the Ostwins. You did see, though, he did finally get the uh, pack to retreat from the fear propaganda. Did he? I missed it. Yeah, did he? Yeah, he did. At the God, very end, it was after his that. T-34 had died. If that had after retreated the before done. the T-34, that could have changed things, too. <laughs> Man, to have games hinging on leaflets. Falling from the sky. So, right, the good news is Love still had that KB-8, that lived, and he just recalled a new S-85 and still has over 200 fuel, so I wouldn't, I mean, he lost a lot in that fight, but I wouldn't count him out yet. He keeps having units come on, like, just in the nick of time. I feel yeah. like, you know, if this SU-85 wasn't already cooking, he could be overrun here. And Ihito, you know, Ihito, he's got two Pyos now, but, man, they've They've got a lot of repairing to do. Somehow, neither Austin has gotten any attention. The priority is the P4 command tank. And more mines going down for Loveness. Showing good wherewithal to keep the mines coming, even 54 minutes into the contest. Well, they're mines really been the game. Yeah. All right, the P4 is back to full health. Now the Pioneer will get to work on these two Oswins. These Oswins have a combined, like, 30 kills, it looks like. <laughs> How did they survive both of those crazy attacks? Right? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. How did pretty, both Oswins amazing. survive both crazy, just balls-to-the-wall attacks? Pretty impressive tank micro from Ihito. This one is just hod like hodled back to base or hobbled back to base, heavy engine damage. But it made it. Love actually grabbing a second SU-85. I think he's tired of uh, his stuff getting flanked. Let's Look at this, just a little Stuck 3 at 55 minutes. Yeah, it's a really good tank now. Um, it has great rate of fire and penetration, so I'm not surprised that he picked one up. Like, he already has two Ostwins and a command tank, right? He doesn't need more anti-tank. I mean, sorry, more anti-infantry. He needs some good AT. All right, well, he's under 100 victory points now, so eventually the VP pressure will start to mount. You can okay. see infantry going after this ammo point first. He's got two Gren squads moving towards the center VP. There's a lot of mines on that center VP. I think he might want to send his Pios in there first. That would be smart, but they've got work to do still. Wow, the, the two Pio squads can repair an Austin pretty quickly. They're almost done with their job. Yeah, I think we'll see another big push out of Ihito there. And uh, that, that'll that probably be the push of the game, right? Whoever wins that will probably win the game. You know he's thinking about it, because both Pio squads have minesweepers now. So mm -hmm. He got sick of his Pios having get forced off and then hitting a bunch of mines on the way out. He knows what he's got to do, and these Pios are heading towards the center. He's down to 80 we VPs. Go. We he's gotta keep mobilizing. an eye on him. He's mobilizing. <laughs> I love it. I love the sound of a force mobilizing for an attack. It's just gets your gets gets the uh, pulse going. Okay, he detects mines, but he's not able to sweep them because the KV-8 is there. The Austins awesome are to coming in. Okay, he's, he's, I guess he's in range so that they're lit up so they won't explode. Exactly. The Oswins, they can't even deal with this Maxim, man. This triple vet Maxim is just withstanding Oswin fire. This Maxim's been a hero since the start. He's got 17 kills. Well, that's the stolen MG42 right there. Oh, is it? Ah, yeah, I should have recognized it from the sound. Oh, my God, the command tank is lost. 
man, the second SU-85. First SU-85 goes down, two Oswins going in deep, but they're not going to be able to hurt the SU-85. The Stug is still in perfect condition. The pack is pushing forward. The sweepers are still alive. The mines are revealed. A, a T-70 comes from the top? Where did this thing come from? Love Nest with the 58-minute fresh T-70 coming in here, flanking the triple vet pack and just and, and clearing it. And now these little pioneers are going to try to reman. So his capping power is gone. The Stug kills the T-70. The pack remains cleared. The Ostwin is gone. Both Ostwins are gone. I'm sorry I didn't get to show the demise of both Ostwins. But this drama in the center around the VP is of utmost importance. The next Pio squad remans the pack, but it is flanked and checkmated by the powerful anti-infantry flame gun of the KV-8. He's going to chase him down and probably take him out. They are done. They are cooked. They're grilled. Ahito is left with his Stug and a, and a trifecta of Ren squads. The Flamers feeling bold. Whoa, huge hot shot from the SU-85 going in against the Stug. Stug pops about one though, and this AT gun's moving up. Stug down! KV-8 roasting Grenadiers, picking up veterancy. A pack is onto the field, takes a long distance shot, it connects and destroys the main gun, but does not kill the vehicle yet. The KV-8 limping backwards, and Love Nest just, I think his late game build, builds have been perfect. The, these SU-85s, are they just always come to save the day. You know, the second one in that fight, which Ahito didn't expect, and now this new fresh one, just like he's he's just got exactly enough to defeat the enemy forces when they push and that is it i think ahito saw the second su-85 and knew that he had no chance after failing to kill the kv-8 that would probably be able to easily protect the center vp for time to come having lost both ostwins lost the stug lost the command tank let's see what did he have cooking he was trying to make another stug but he I think he knew that it, it, exactly one hour he surrenders. At exactly one hour. Look at the clock. <laughs> well, Look at that, that clock. wouldn't happen again. And it, the, you know how you were saying about how Love Nest constantly had just the perfect unit for the job? Is that yeah. that late game T70 to get Wasn't in there and flank shock? the pack? Yeah, oh, and let, let him push up with his KV 8 and his other SU because the pack got decrewed like two times before the T70 died. That wound up being huge. And man, I would never have thought to do that. No, yeah, definitely not. I've been like, well, I guess I can make a T thirty four seventy six or another Katusha. But man, yeah, it was the immediacy that was required, and that was the unit that could just pop out and do the job at the time and buy enough time for the next SU eighty five to come out. And they were so big. Look at this mortar triple vet just surviving it all. Fifteen kills. That yeah, that stolen MG was huge. The the Austwins couldn't couldn't clear it, man. It just it just took so much Austwin fire. Check him out. Six yeah, men the unit just, spread. The, the six men were spread out over a large area because they were in neutral cover, which made the Austins have such a hard time trying to kill them. I think the Austins were also kind of shooting uphill a little bit. A lot of their shots were kind of bouncing early into the into the earth. But wow, that was a great game. I I am I am thoroughly satisfied. Let me go back to the commentator scene. Here we are, exhausted from casting. Cs having a drink. That's a great idea. Yeah. I was a little bit thirsty after that hour. Um, we pulled Tsai Funk back in the saddle. I hope you guys all follow us on Twitter. Um, I will be, any little update about Operation Charlie Fox, I will be tweeting. And uh, KOTU.org now has our social media managers. It is now managed independently. So follow that one too. And follow Ciaz. He'll let you know of any streams he might have coming. Let's, let's refresh our prize pool. <laughs> How close are we to this 24-hour... Pledge from Ciaz. Let's see if we made it. I don't know if we made it. I'm refreshing. Everything what went white. My computer's like, just give me a break, man. I have a million windows open. What's going on? Where am I? Why is it not loading? I don't know. The, the drama, the mystery. Mine's dead. This one's dead. I don't know what's going on. Will you go here? So we're at 1088.91. Oh, man. Look at that. 
1088.91. So we are uh, math, math, uh, 12, 20, $62 short. I think you're off the hook, man. Yeah, well, we could say, how about this? If we get to 2,000, I should say when we get to 2,000, because we're going to make it. When we 2, get to 2,000, I'll do Come it. On now. Yeah, we can. I don't know about that. I don't you want to hire? No, I don't know that we'll make 2,000. That's oh, crazy. I, we'll 2, I, I hoped to make 1,000. I don't have any aspirations at all of making 2,000. I hope to make I think 1, we'll make it. I don't know. That's a lot. So 62 bucks short of this guy doing a 24-hour stream? Come on. We're the CS fans. Who's going to cough in the last amount? Actually, it's pretty significant. They would have to put up like yeah. 120 or something. Let's go over to the commentator. Uh, sorry, the, the contributor screen. And just see how much we have. How many can, how many how many contributors we have? The less the list is getting long. Ah, Jeslin's on there. Jeslin <laughs> donating himself money, money, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I am wiped out. Those were two excellent games that we we're privileged to witness. Vindicare is on there now. I'm glad they were submitted. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. these dudes will be signing up. Oh yeah, uh, Vindy, I'm sure will. So after I shut the stream down, I will update the ticker to count down to registration. Um, let's look at the news post. The open registration for the big open tournament will be, let's see, it should be like two weeks before the actual tournament. Let me just check the date for you guys real quick. All right, so registration for the open qualifier, which will be Sunday, September 20th. So all you Code 2 players, mark Sunday, September 20th on your calendar. It'll probably start around when we usually start stuff, which is like 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. like GMT, something like that, so that West Coasters, which time zone are you in, CS? I'm U.S. East. You're U.S. East. Okay, so for you guys, it starts at usually around like noon or maybe yeah, yeah. 11 that sounds at the right. earliest. 11 or noon, yeah. And then so like 5 p.m. in England and then 6 p.m. maybe in Europe, something like that. And then if you're on the West Coast, you got to wake up early at like 8 or so. Um, but so, yeah, that, that, that'll be the general start time for each uh, tourney day per usual because we figure we, we cover most of the active globe like – Europe, America, you know, we try to cover as much as we can. And we apologize, of course, to Australians who always have a tough time joining our event because of the time zones and Koreans as well. But hey, if you're a diehard, you stay up, right? You just mark it on That's your right. calendar on that day, stay up late and play in our tourney. So that'll be uh, Sunday, September 20th. And we will open up registration on Sunday, September 6th. So uh, we'll we'll make a thread in the event central, and you guys can all sign up with your Steam player ID names, number name and number. And yeah, the more the merrier. Everybody will get to play. If you sign up and you check in, you will play. That much I can guarantee. We have no limit on players, but you are required to both sign up on Code2.org and check in on the day. If you don't check in, you're out. Well, it's like I always say, there's no, you know, people say they don't want to play ones because it's scary and they don't want to lose and stressful. But there's no shame in losing to a tournament, right? It takes guts just to sign up for the tournament. That's something that the vast majority of people already don't do. So that already that's being courageous and putting yourself out there. Yes. So everybody should sign up, definitely. Um, all right. I think we've covered everything, man. I'm exhausted. I'm starting to throw my voice out. It's been a while for me. Yeah, I gotta go make some salsa and get dinner going. It's almost six where I am. Oh, that sounds so good. Can I can I eat at your house? <laughs> if you fly Are here. Are you guys doing like like burritos and chips and salsa and stuff? That that sounds delicious. Yeah, so we have like um, when we do our movie dates, what we commonly do is make like taco salad. So we make homemade salsa and then we do our ground turkey and you know cook it up like in taco seasoning and all that and then we add a couple types of beans onions cheese i'm so hungry right lettuce. now yeah, i'm so hungry right now okay guys i hope you enjoyed our stream 
We had over 500 viewers for most of it, and uh, you know the the hype snowball train. I think we're just going to build and build and build and build, and let's try to make OCF a successful event. And we're already off to a great start. So thanks, guys. I'll see if I can make Ami add a 24-hour stream for me at 2,000. Yeah, uh, that's you. Okay. Because I feel well, I feel bad for anybody that donated, like hoping that, that would happen, and then it ended up not happening. <laughs> So All if right. we put it at two thousand and then put it you know, at like fifteen hundred, like, hey, it's what it's whatever you want. And I'm offering that we'll, you know, we'll, to do we'll that. We'll get it, it in there somewhere. That's one yeah, thing yeah. that we have left open is that we may add stretch goals at any time, and it looks like we're yeah. going to be adding some because we're off to a great start. So thank you guys all so very much, and um, you know, follow, retweet, share on Facebook, social media, get on the forums, post, and uh, spread the word. And players, get practicing. We'll see you in Auto Match, and we'll see you on the streams, right? That's right. Any shout-outs before we go? Um, Shout-out to Love Nest for uh, messaging me about that awesome game so we could cast it. That was a really, really intense game. And I hit O for playing. Like That was very uh, you know, unconventional, that Ostwin push, but it almost worked. So it's a very, very cool game. Coco Jambo contender right there. Yeah, for, uh, that could have been for sure. Non meta with the secret double Austin bolt build only revealed. We actually, what well, I just realized, we actually saw all tiers for both players and Colin tanks. You can't build much more than that in, in one well, game, you know what I mean? That is truly impressive because yeah. that was not the case like, like a year ago or SNF5 yeah. or even the Dr. Vox tournament. You never saw all, f all four tiers. Uh, sometimes you, you didn't even saw see two tiers. Sometimes you didn't see any tier three or tier four. <laughs> it would be like all call in. Yeah. So yeah. the fact that we saw all tiers from all players in this game is really encouraging. Just that fact alone. All right. So great. Thanks for coming out, guys. I'm going to show you some wonderful artworks by our artists, um, TM Dutchie, Nordkin, High Five, um, Strumming Bird. Uh, I've got some great slides to show off. And so on behalf of Ciaz and myself and the entire staff at KOTU.org, uh, we thank you for watching this. And let's make uh, Operation Charlie Fox an awesome event. Uh, All right. It's going to be amazing. We'll see you guys. Thanks for coming Take out. Take care, Ami. Au revoir. Tschüss. How do you say goodbye in Russian? Ciao. I no, think it's, it's Bulgarian. It's that's definitely a, Bulgarian too. Uh, yeah, they probably use it, but that, that's Italian. Ciao. I don't. I can't believe I don't know that. I should know that. I've actually been to St. Petersburg. Anyway, I know how to say it in British. Uh, bye. Cheerio. Oh, cheerio. <laughs>